Hey guys, my name is Guy Britton and I'm a mix engineer and a producer. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to create an intimate modern pop vocal sound using only stock plugins available in Logic Pro. If you're not a Logic user or if you want to use third party plugins, then that's absolutely fine. All of these techniques are translatable to other plugins and the focus here is much more on the process rather than on the tools that we're using. I just thought it would be good to show you that there's a lot of power in the Logic Stock plugins and it is possible to engineer a great sounding vocal without having a bunch of expensive plugins. This video is going to be in two parts. In this part, we're going to be looking at compression and EQ to shape the vocal sound. And then in the second part, we'll be diving into effects and looking at how to create interest with the vocal using reverbs and delays, etc. I'm also going to be dropping a link in the description below to the vocal chain that we're using in today's video. So if you are a Logic user, then you guys will be able to download that and import that into your own sessions as you like. So. Let's get started. So you'll see that we have a super simple setup for this video. Uh, I have just a bounce of the whole instrumental mix. And then I have this lead vocal track as well as the backing vocal stem. There's also this track stack, which is the vocal chain that we're going to be using. But let's take a listen to the track first, and then we can start to see how we can process this using the vocal chain here. You say you don't remember, but I recall it all that makes me a sinner. You don't know how to surrender These games I fall No one's a winner We fall a little deeper Every time we're getting closer But I know that I'll never be the one And it all comes down to Who's gonna get screwed first Who's gonna get hurt This time it's not my turn so you'll hear there's a vibe there already just in terms of the performance and the song, but I feel like there's a few issues in that vocal that we need to iron out um, and it'd be good to kind of just add a bit more feel to it, make it a little brighter, bring it up closer to the listener to really make it feel like she's in our ears. So first thing I'm going to do is alt shift and drag this up to this lead vocal track in the vocal chain and then I'm going to mute this for the time being and we'll just use this track for the processing which is already in place and this will be in the vocal chain when you download it. So first thing is the EQ. My approach to vocals, mixing vocals, mixing anything really is that you should always take away the stuff you don't want before you start adding the stuff that you do want. So before we start to kind of brighten the vocal and bring it up front and, you know, kind of make it super compressed and, and nice and sort of uh, intimate sounding, there's going to be some stuff that we need to take out. So going to play it back, take a listen and see what we can do with this EQ to kind of remove any frequencies and so on that are causing us problems. So let's take a listen. You say you don't remember, but I recall it all that makes me a sinner. You don't know how to surrender. These games I fall, no one's a winner. We fall a little deeper every time we're getting closer But I know that I'll never be the one And it all comes down to who Fall a little deeper every time we're getting closer But I know that I'll never be the one And it all comes down to who's gonna get screwed first Who's gonna get hurt This time it's not my turn You say you don't remember you say you don't remember. You say you don't remember. You say you don't remember. But I recall it all that makes me a sinner. You don't know how to surrender. These games I fall. No one's a winner. We're falling. So. Not doing a whole amount there to that vocal. I just noticed that there's some kind of boxiness around the four to 500 hertz region, which I think we can get rid of, as well as some down here in the low mids. But I feel like this kind of 250 hertz area, if we take too much out of it, it's going to make the vocal sound too thin. So I don't mind keeping a bit of that in there for now, and we can always dial it out later if we need to. Um, there's also some harshness in the mid range that I'm hearing, which we just kind of knock a little bit out of, and then just trying to kind of dial out some of the sibilance using the EQ. Um, and then obviously just, just rolling off uh, everything below 108 hertz just to kind of get rid of that. 108 hertz is quite specific. I mean, you don't have to be that specific. You put it anywhere you want, like around about 120 hertz or so um, without that without that resonance. Um, and that will just clean up all that low end that we don't need. So it's a pretty good start. We can tweak these as we go. Moving on, I feel like there's quite a lot of sibilance in this vocal. So just going to use the de to reduce any of that. So let's take a listen and see the point where the de really starts to kind of smooth it out. I like this Logic de a lot, this new one. Um, I think it's as good as 
a lot of other DSs available. So, you know, don't sleep on this one if you've got Logic Pro, because I really like this. You say you don't remember, but I recall it all that makes me a sinner. You say you don't remember, but I. You say you don't remember. You say you don't remember, but I recall it all that makes me a sinner. Cool. So you know that's pretty straightforward. We don't want to don't want to be too intrusive with the deesser. Just kind of get it touching on and dialing out a little bit of that harshness in that top end, um, and yeah, just just smooth that vocal out. So. Moving on to the compressor, uh, I'm going to start with a vintage FET here. These first three plugins in the chain are mostly just designed to kind of smooth out any issues. Um, and then we're going to use these three later on to kind of add some vibe. Now, this FET is going to help us smooth out some of the dynamic issues that I'm hearing. Um, right about here somewhere, you'll notice that the vocal really jumps up in. This game's awful, no one's a winner. So just want to control that a little bit so that it's not too like, oh, um... And the FET, based on the 1176, I think it sounds, this one sounds really good in Logic. I like how this one sounds, and it's really great for kind of grabbing that vocal and pinning it in place. Um, I'm going to want a super fast release just to make sure that as soon as the compressor's reacted, it's ready to go again. And then uh, we're going to have a kind of a medium to fast attack, four to one ratio. I'm also going to turn off the auto gain here. This is really important. I think Logic kind of defaults it to zero or minus 12 dB. I'm going to set this to off. Uh, so I don't want it adding any unnecessary volume. So just going to use the threshold and then just balance it out with the makeup gain. So let's find the point where the threshold kind of starts to, or sorry, where the needle starts to move on the threshold. Um, and then we'll we'll kind of balance the compression from there. This game's awful. No one's a winner. We're falling a little deeper every time we're getting closer. But I know that I'll never be the one. And it all comes down to who's gonna get screwed first. Who's this game's awful, no one's a winner. You don't know how to surrender. This game's awful, no one's don't know how to surrender. This game's awful, no one's a winner. You don't know how to surrender. This game's awful, no one's a winner. Cool. So my approach to compression at this stage of the processing is like, I don't want to do too much. You know, I just want to kind of find the points where it's jumping out and just deal with them. So I'm not trying to kind of flatten the vocal, I'm not trying to make it super compressed. I'm just trying to kind of deal with the problem areas. Uh, a good way to do this, like a good way to measure sort of where you should set the threshold, I find, is to find the quietest parts in the vocal around here somewhere and just kind of get the needle moving ever so slightly or perhaps even not at all. Um, and then when it's as it starts to jump up here, this is when the compressor will react. So you see the needle is just hardly moving at all. Um, but it's up here where it starts to really react, and that's what we want. This game's awful. No one's a so if I just hit control B and bounce that in place, we can see how much we've smoothed. Um you know, there is still some dynamic and that's good because like I said, I don't want to completely squash the vocal, but the dynamic range here is a lot less than what it is here. So this is good. This is a good start. So we're going to move on to the next stage, which is a second compressor in the chain. Now, this uh, vintage Opto, I think it sounds really cool. Um, it's obviously based on the LA-2A. Whether it sounds anything like an LA-2A or not, I don't really care. Um, I just want to, at this stage now, start thinking about adding some vibe, really bringing that vocal up close and kind of adding some intimacy to this vocal because it's sounding good, but it, I think it could sound a little brighter, a little bit kind of more like it's in my ears. So this plugin's great for that kind of thing. Um, a few settings, auto gain off again, release I've set to auto. Uh, I'm also using the distortion here. So the, this distortion circuit sounds really cool when it's set to soft, it kind of adds some upper harmonics and some brightness to the vocal. Uh, let's take a listen and see what we can do. The winner. We're falling a little deeper every time we're getting closer. But I know that I'll never be the one. And it all comes down to who's gonna get screwed first. Who's you say you don't remember, but I recall it all that makes me a sinner. You don't know how to surrender This game's awful, no one's a winner We're falling a little deeper every time we're getting closer But I know that I'll never be the one And it all comes down 
into who's gonna get screwed first, who's gonna get hurt. You say you don't remember, but I recall it all. So for me, that's just kind of adding like an airiness and a brightness now that it's kind of this uh, soft distortion is, you know, adding those top end harmonics. You notice that the mix control is set to around about 60%. And that's just because I felt like 100% was too much. It felt too colorful, kind of too compressed. Uh, but I didn't want to necessarily back down on the compression. I'd rather just sort of blend a bit in. So set that to 60 but you you know you could dial that to taste in your own sessions this is not any all of these numbers are not fixed you know this is just kind of how it's working for this track so moving on um i got the tube eq based on the pultec eqp 1a um this eq is great for just adding kind of top end or sort of boosting that top end should i say um and yeah let's take a listen i'm going to start around about 12k and just boost there and see what we can do the point of this now is to just really bring that vocal above the track, make it super clear, nice and bright, and uh, and yeah, really go for that intimacy with this plugin. So let's take a listen. You say you don't remember, but I recall it all that makes me a sinner. You don't know how to surrender. These games I fall, no one's a winner. We're falling a little deeper every time we're getting closer But I know that I never You say you don't remember But I recall it all that makes me Falling a little deeper every time we're getting We're falling a little deeper every time we're getting closer But I know that I never so you'll hear there in particular Like this part when the, uh, when the BVs come in And the rest of the track sort of picks up This is where that that EQ really shines. It really helps the vocal to come out above above the track um, and kind of have its own space. Like it feels a little, so if I play it again and turn that EQ off, it feels kind of cloudy without the EQ and then you put the EQ on and it just brightens the whole thing up and really helps that vocal to cut through. You say we're falling a little deeper every time we're getting closer, but I know that I'll never be the one. What it has done though is introduce some more sibilant, sibilance issues. So this is why we have two DSs in the chain. I like one early on just to take out any sibilance that's kind of causing issues early on and so that it's not affecting the compressor too much. Um, but then as we start to add that compression and start to boost that top end, this is when we're going to run into some more sibilant problems. So I always like to have kind of one at the beginning of the chain, one at the end of the chain, just to smooth things out. Sometimes you need more than two and that's absolutely fine. Like it doesn't matter how many you use so long as you get there and the vocal sounds quite natural. So let's take a listen and see what we can do with this last de You say you don't remember, but I recall it all that makes me a sinner. You don't know how to surrender. These games I fall, no one's a winner. We're falling a little deeper every time we're getting closer But I know that I'll never be the one And it all comes down to who's gonna get screwed first Who's gonna get hurt This time it's not my turn Cool, so that feels like a pretty good start. We can adjust these settings as we go into part two and start to add effects and so on and that's when we kind of really shape the vocal sound but this whole first part here with the processing is really just about, like I say, ironing out any issues and then just shaping the vocal up a bit so that it starts to sit above the track and, and really, you know, um, really start to be where we want it to be in the mix. And for me, that's really important. You can add effects, you know, early on and sort of add some reverbs and so on. But for me, like, if you've got issues with the vocal, you're only going to have issues with the reverb that you add to the vocals. So I like to do it this way, you know, get the vocal kind of straight and ironed out early on. Make sure that any issues are resolved and then you can start to add effects once you've, you know, once you kind of fix those problems. So let's take a quick listen to uh, the before and after. So this is the vocal track that we started with. I'm going to play it and kind of switch between the two and you can hear how this processing has helped to shape that vocal so far. You say you don't remember, but I recall it all that makes me a sinner. You don't know how to surrender These games I fall, no one's a winner We're falling a little deeper every time we're getting closer But I know that I'll never be the one And it all comes down to who's gonna get screwed first Who's gonna get hurt, this time it's not my turn
So you can hear that vocal has way more intimacy, really cuts through the track a lot more, feels a lot more exciting. And um, I don't like to use the word professional, but it, you know, it feels a lot more polished and it feels like it's kind of heading in the right direction. So hopefully this stuff has been useful. Hopefully you can take some of this away. Like I say, whether you use Logic or not, it doesn't really matter. Like whether you want to use the stock plugins or whether you want to use third party plugins is absolutely fine. Hopefully you can apply this kind of technique of just ironing out the issues and, and kind of going through step by step to other plugins um, and hopefully achieve some good results. So if you like this video, please subscribe, please leave a thumbs up, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what plugins you like to use in your vocal chain. And yeah, hopefully see you in part two.